token to something quite different. So something that you are, so your physiological uh, um, features like the iris, the fingerprint, or also something that you can do, like your signature, the way you are speak, so the voice or the way you walk to so your gait. So that is very interesting. Um, the definition of biometrics uh, uh, is uh, referred to an automated recognition. So it's important to create this process that can be done also in an automatic manner. And there are two aspects also in the ISO definition. So behavioral, the way that you move, for example, and biological. So something very strict like uh, your specific uh, features you can find on the palm, the, the face and the, and the iris, for example. So mm, typically humans tend to be multimodal. So we have fingerprint recognition, face recognition, but humans are able to act like a multimodal system. Try to think, you are seeing a girl running towards you and uh, in the same time, your brain is starting to process all the data in a simultaneous way. So the face is quite similar. You, you're saying, hello, hi. So you can recognize maybe the voice. Maybe you can th think about something different about uh, the way she's um, walking. So, and uh, very uh, automatically, your s brain is... Um, collecting those information, making different weights, and to define the identity. Maybe something is not uh, the first glance or the first impression that you had, so you can decide that this is uh, not Laura, this is Maria, her sister, okay? And uh, it's very hard for an automatic system to behave in such a manner, so such a sophisticated manner with different layers, but the, new rates and technology are pushing the technique in this sense, in this goal. So why biometrics is uh, so hard to achieve? Because uh, essentially it is a multidisciplinary uh, discipline. So you have to know a lot of uh, image processing, optics, statistics, uh, also about security and uh, human-machine uh, interaction to let system be easily used by the users and also a strong base in pattern matching. So to create a complete system, it's a quite complex task. There are two main tasks that you have to solve and with different um, difficulty and complexity, of course. The first and basic task is the verification, so it is called one-to-one -one method. So you have a person in front of you and the system must recognize the face uh, by matching with the face stored, for example, in the document. So you are not uh, uh, browsing uh, something big like a very large data set of images. You have just to, confront, to match one single image in the document with one image that you have uh, in front of your sensor. Uh, you can easily understand that it's quite different that an identification is a more complex task. In this case, uh, you just have uh, one single image in front of the sensor, you have no information about the identity, and you have to browse to match all the identities that you have in, a, in, a, in your data set of images, the people that you enrolled. Since you don't have any information about the identity, like in the document or the name the people is saying, so you have to do for one to n uh, comparison. So doing one single identification is uh, way more complex than just a simple verification. Um, biometric system is offering you something more interesting than just a login a password. So you can do a positive and negative uh, recognition. So if you are just typing, mistyping your uh, password, the system is not recognizing you as a uh, something different is just a wrong password in biometrics you as you can also define that uh, the people in front of you is quite different from someone else so there's no different for a password if i'm typing a wrong password or someone else is attempting my password 
in biometric system, you can recognize those different in front of the system. So, and that's called negative identification. You can do it for verification and also identification. For example, creating a blacklist in the airport, you can check if someone passing through a gate is not belonging to those lists. So this is a new interesting feature you can apply to the biometric system. And uh, of course, you can do different uh, positive uh, action, like to prevent the use of a single identity by several people in the case of positive verification. But if you're using the capability of a biometric system to, to achieve negative identification, you can prevent the use of multiple identities by a single person. So this is quite interesting. Uh, it is commonly agreed that uh, if you are plotting the different methods of identification or verification of the identity, uh, with respect to the security level you can achieve, uh, something that you have is the minimum. Uh, level of security, since it's so easy to give someone your token, your key, to lost your key, or someone else will use them. Something that you know is in the, is higher uh, security level, like your hidden password. But it is commonly accepted that uh, something that you are is uh, more complex to uh, to spoof, and also is offering more. Uh, accuracy in the defecation. Okay, this is the, you can imagine those three limits. Uh, biometrics is uh, not so easy to achieve since uh, you have to extract something invariant in your shape, uh, in your behavior, distinguishing and uh, not be fooled by what is happening at your face during time and your fingerprint in time. So there is variability in time in the, your biometric traits. In this case, uh, the, the face, if you are moving slowly one year to another in this time frame, uh, there's no big changes in the face. But if you move on the decades, this kind of time frame, about decades, is not so easy to, to, to identify a person. In this case, you have this uh, very uh, remarkable example from this girl, which is one of the best uh, poetry picture ever done in the, the National Geographic activity. And uh, this is the singer uh, after a few decades. So you, it's not easy uh, for you to exactly determine if the two faces belongs to the same person. So every biometric trait has different uh, variability in time, and that's a problem that you can have to solve. You can have also occlusions, of course. Now we have a surgical mask, so only a portion of your face is available for the systems, but also you can have hair, you can have uh, sunglasses, you can have glare on your um, uh, glasses, or you can change your beer, and so on. So, uh, occlusion is another important problem to be solved uh, by the automatic recognition system using biometrics. Are quite different. Uh, you can go from very high security application like advanced border control. Uh, we was involved in a European project to design the next uh, generation of advanced border control to do automatically the recognition in the airport in the land borders, for example, and the sea borders. So you have just to approach the gate, you have to push your passport into the reader, and uh, the system is trying to identify at the first glance using your face. And this is not enough because your face is occluded or the variation in time is uh, uh, making this uh, recognition with respect to the data in your passport is not uh, to a proper level. The system, in, for example, is asking you to fingerprint, to create a multimodal. So you, are, you can merge the face information with the finger information. You can move to surveillance, which is a covered application most of the time. So you are not aware that you are <laughs> using this case uh, most of the time faces and the, the new capability about uh, 
surveillance camera with higher frame rate, better resolution is uh, making now possible to do an effective biometric recognition. Please do not think that it's easy to do on a very large scale, on the state scale or a huge city scale because the accuracy of the face is not so perfect to allow you to do this kind of very large application. But you can use a biometric in surveillance in the screening or in smaller application. But in the future, we have improvement in the recognition system due to deep learning methods and the, the cameras and the images are quite better. So you have to think about that as a uh, interesting problem and the problem about the privacy too in the future so now you can uh, use a biometric system to do atms activity using the modes in the shops of course and the smartphone the mobile world about biometric system is exploding so the, the, you can see uh, how many years ago the first biometric phone was uh, produced and uh, so there was just a, a tiny strip you can just scrap your finger to recreate uh, the fingerprint now we have uh, in the top notch uh, cell phone in the market you can find the many a plethora of biometric sensor from tie of life sensors structure the light sensor 3d sensor high resolution camera iris sensors and blow sensors but you can also think about the privacy problem so there's a lot of information to be exploited in the multimodal way to improve the accuracy and the usability and maybe create in the future and today larger problem in the privacy so let's now review a little bit what you can do uh, and how is structure is the structure biometric system to be used in cybersecurity application and amit intelligence so um you can see there are two kind of uh, main traits as we saw in the definition so we have physiological like uh, fingerprint iris hand geometry palm print palm vein ear or uh, your pulse in the heart or the dna so exactly the the structure about your features and your traits but on the other side uh, bio, bio um, behavioral traits can be um, uh, very interested because uh, maybe you will find less accuracy, but the voice, gaze, signature. And uh, this is why we are leaving the fingerprint on the object and on the sensors. But uh, as you can see on the bottom left, uh, there are two fingerprints of the same person, which is are, are looking quite different. And you have two fingerprints of two different persons that looks quite similar. So again, we need to extract the invariance of uh, one individual and to be safe against uh, similarity with respect to other individuals. So it will be no easy to do that. Most of the time, automatic uh, recognition in fingerprints are looking to two main uh, details called minutia. Uh, they are bifurcation and uh, ridge end. If you are looking to the ridges on your finger, you will find exactly those two kind of uh, uh, local uh, features and that is the structure of the feature used by the most uh, powerful and, uh, and accurate uh, recognition system in, um, in the mobile world but also in uh, the police activity uh, face face is one of the most common biometric we are using to recognize each other we are using the face in the documents and in the, in the police activity, investigation activity. Face can be 
detected just by a very simple webcam or maybe also three-dimensional uh, system because uh, the structure of the face is again another interesting biometric features so it's very accepted by people it's not so uh, accurate by the identification error in, um, in biometrics but it's very uh, common to use the face sensors can be very simple or very expensive depending on your application Um, the face, even if you are changing the pose or the expression, since we we trained our uh, brain, our neural network just from the birth to recognize people just from the face. Iris is another very interesting biometric feature, which is uh, uh, so detailed, so you can extract a lot of features, salient and relevant features from the iris pattern. Um, so. It is one of the most accurate biometric take. Compared to the other, you can reach the accuracy of DNA using the iris recognition system. But you have to face a lot of cha challenges too. For example, uh, in front of uh, the cornea, which is uh, the external layer of the iris, you will find a lot of reflections and occlusions like uh, the eye brushes uh, and uh, the pupil is changing the size of the iris so the, the the whole structure of the iris will change with respect to the light condition in your room where you are seeing and uh, for us the um, the eyes are in this sense the the soul of the person so we are so uh, for us it's not a problem to look at the eyes all the time but it's not easy for an automatic system to locate the eye and to find exactly the iris pattern because uh, there's a lot of movements because uh, our eyes are moving so fast uh, all the day <laughs> every moment so find the perfect time to grab a good frame from the iris is, is uh, absolutely that uh, easy so when you have to extract the, the features and you have to exclude what is not an iris, so the eye brushes and the reflection and so on. But you can do something very remarkable. For example, in this case, the Professor John Dagman, the creator and inventor about the iris code, which is this conversion from the iris pattern in the image to a string of bit, which is so powerful, so effective. So Professor Dagman took the um, printed copy about the National Geographic with this beautiful Afghan girl, Shabal Gula, and using the scanner created the, the, the string of bits corresponding to the Irish code of this girl. And um, when the National Geographic sent the photographers and the team to reconnect to the people in the previous reportage, in the previous shooting, uh, the team was not sure that this girl on the right was the same girl in the past so they took the photos and this was an open problem to demonstrate uh, of course you can see that the, the, the site is quite the same but there's no certainty about that professor john darman sitting in uh, his office uh, get the second photo about sharbat gula um, and uh, the features coming from the iris code did a match uh, and uh, professor john daman was able to demonstrate with absolutely certainty with a statistical error uh, very negligible okay that this is the eye of uh, the previous girl in the previous uh, photo okay so and that will go for problems maybe in the future because uh, okay this is an exploit which is quite interesting about the biometric capability but also making some uh, worries because uh, Sharbagula 
Sharbat Gula was identified after something like 15 years using just the data coming from a news paper, from a journal, and from an, an internet photo, and uh, with so perfect accuracy using this technique. So it is very important for accuracy, but is uh, quite frightening about the privacy. Signature. Uh, we are reviewing the, the main biometric trait, and signature is a behavioral one. Since uh, the way you are doing your signature is uh, your specific pattern that you built after many attempts and improvement of your signature, but is so variable. You can have a look here. You, you can have uh, in the blue lines, you have 10 repeats of the same user just one time after the other, not after years. So this trait has a huge variability. You can scan a static uh, signature from a document, but you can also use some pad and some pen with a special accelerometers, so you can detect the acceleration about your um, movements. And so you have to extract the again, the invariant part about those um, data coming from the, the sensors. So it is very interesting that the signature is uh, uh, maybe the common biometric trait we are using to do the most important contract in our life when you are getting married, when you are buy a house or a car. But is of course the one of the less accurate, uh, bio, accurate biometric uh, trait that we have. So this is funny because we are using the worst biometric trait to do the most important contracts and transaction in our life. So, and that something else is incoming, not just uh, something external, but something that is coming from the inside, from uh, uh, your heart activity, uh, your brain activity. In the past, those kind of signals, the electrocardiogram and the electroencephalogram, was just in the hospital with the complex sensors. But now, if you look, you will see those kind of information come in your e everyday life through the wristband, energy band, and uh, smartwatches. So, if of course, it's a very interesting biometric trait because it's revealing what is happening inside you and is also making possible to continuous authenticating you because if you are pushing the fingerprint on the sensor in this moment you have a strong authentication but after a few seconds you can give the cell phone to someone else but in this case you can be more so so biometrics so those kind of traits are helping the biometric system to be more robust about the attack, to search and browse in a huge data set with more efficiency, looking for a male or a female, looking for a Caucasian or not. So gender, skin color, eye color, weight, height are parameters that can help. Of course, they are not enough to recognize exactly one person. But uh, um, probably um, that will help to improve the biometric system. There are a lot of techniques to uh, fuse, intelligent fuse the features coming from the soft biometrics to the current and typical biometric traits. You can extract other f interesting features from the user. In this case, uh, also the motion recognition. In this case, you can um, extract the feelings that you are proving because uh, your face expression are revealing them. And again, this is quite important, not just to make a, a security and cyber security application, but this go for ambient intelligence. For the interaction between you and uh, the, uh, the human machine interface to improve. So this is the classical structure of a biometric system. So you have the straight, you have an acquisition module, then you have to control the quality. You don't want to enroll a blurred fingerprint, otherwise you will not be able to get this criminal uh, in, uh, in the future. So you have a quality control in case uh, the quality is not enough. You have to ask again the biometric trait. 
Then the sensor will extract a digital representation of the trade, which is the sample. You are extracting the features, creating the template, and you can store the template in the document or in the database. Once you are controlling the identity of a person in front of the sensor, you are creating this match module. So you are uh, comparing the fresh template coming from the sensor with one or n template coming from the database or the documents in order to get the identity uh, or the identification. So this is the complete chain. But you have to focus about the matching. So you are not able to push your finger on the sensor in the same and exact way every time. It's not possible. Uh, you will change something. The face tomorrow will be different. Uh, and all the biometric take will change in time a little bit. So the matching model is not returning like in the cryptographic application 0 or 1. It's returning a match score, for example, from 0 to 1. Then you have to decide the threshold. A threshold which is uh, will determine if you are entering uh, in the door, in the biometric gate or not. You can uh, move the threshold. And if you are moving the threshold too high, it will be no easy for you to place the finger so perfectly with respect. Easy for the user to get into the system, you have to decrease a little bit the threshold. But in this case, if you are decreasing too much the threshold, even the imposter, someone that is who is attempting to get in, even if it's not uh, enrolled in the system. Okay, if you are making the threshold lower, okay, you are probably helping imposters to get in. So the decision about the threshold will be one of the most important designing points. And please have a look. There are two different types of errors. False match is someone which is who is entering your home. So you can have someone stealing in your home about this kind of uh, error. But you, you can have also the opposite situation. So you can have a false non-match because you are a genuine, so you are entitled to get in. But the system is declaring you as a non-match, so not allowed. But it's false because you are a genuine, you are enrolled. And so there are two kinds of different errors. If you are doing a biometric system for a research center, the two different errors will be different in uh, effect and, and economic cost. It is different if you are doing something like a, a underground ticket system using biometrics. So depending on the application, the two errors will have a different uh, cost and uh, danger. But uh, not just uh, cybersecurity and uh, um, controlling the access of an environment. Uh, biometrics is used now also to do something for your typical environment. So what is ambient intelligence? So a digital environment that proactively but sensibly support people in their daily lives. So we are referring to this kind of definition and let's review how the biometric will help this kind of environment. What are the main uh, properties uh, about um, ambient intelligence? So uh, to create an effective ambient intelligence uh, structure and uh, interaction, you need the scalability, invisibility, contrast awareness, smartness, and the proaction anticipatory. So you want the system will uh, react before you are demanding something because the system is capable to understand your needs. So these are very interesting five features to be achieved to get a very good ambient intelligence uh, um, environment. So how the biometrics system is capable to improve one or more than one of these features, it is uh, discussed in the next slides. So today we have the smart home with a lot of uh, improvement uh, in the interaction and the security where the biometric system will help today and the future that will be extended to the size of a city. So not just transportation system, but the whole city will benefit about uh, 
those kind five features about ambient intelligence and biometric system since is automatically identifying you will carry your property in your house in your transportation system and uh, while you are walking and living in your smart city so not just cybersecurity, but uh, three main uh, features which are identification of course but also classification which is uh, easy so you are not identifying perfectly your identity but you are maybe classifying uh, adults or kids to provide different contents from the advertising system or just your uh, tv screens action understanding um, exploiting the capability of the biometric system to understand your by behavior so action understand will allow to be proactive to and uh, for example feeling the sensations or the reactions will will provide a lot of information for the interfaces and the system through the interactions with the humans so if you are dealing with some ambient intelligence application what are what are the the best um, feature biometric feature that you can use so there is no one golden trait to be used everywhere uh, you need to be careful and you need to um, the, wisely choose what is the best trait that you can use in this case uh, um, some trade will be good for ambient intelligence but some other trade will be used only for cyber security let's review them so you can see on the left features so the operational modalities you are using the devices and the systems if it is overt or covert you can see and be aware if the biometric system is in front of you and working so what are the most used trade if you are touching something or just using in a touchless fashion and if you need to be enrolled before or the mechanism and the system can work without enrollment so in security application you can you will go for identification of course and verification and most of the time the system is mostly over so you can be aware that you are pushing the finger on the sensor and you are looking into the high security camera to be recognized you are using most of the time the face the fingerprint and the iris because we those are the most accurate biometric data that you have and you have to touch something you have to uh, not with the face but with a palm uh, fingerprint and iris you have to be very close to the sensor and you need to be enrolled of course in surveillance it's the opposite case uh, most of the time you are not aware exactly where are the cameras and you cannot detect uh, fingerprints so you will go for a face or a gate so these are touchless technology and uh, of course if you are making surveillance in environment you have no uh, enrollment so people are entering uh, in the environment exiting to the environment and new people will be added frame by frame um, ambient intelligence is something in the middle because uh, it is not just identification maybe it's profiling in this sense and we are doing that not just to cybersecurity, but to improve the interaction. So it can be overt or covert. So this, the house can recognize who is entering the home to set them the preset of the home with respect to the people inside in this moment in the house. So in this case, um, you want to be more friendly, more easy to use. So it will be the voice. so you want to go touchless in this sense and uh, sometimes uh, you don't want to be enrolled uh, just uh, the system is recognizing and opening the door if uh, we have an adult and just if you are a kid uh, this back door will be not opened by the system and so on so it is very interesting you have to adapt the perfect biometric day to your application so the challenges in uh, not in security but in this case in ambient intelligence application are uncontrolled scenarios so you have not just in front of the sensor but you have to uh, deal with uh, the whole environment like uh, for example a station or 
um, some uh, mobile stairs and so on. Poor quality samples, because people is not cooperative, so the sensors are not working properly or perfectly. So you can will benefit by heterogeneous information, not so accurate from the biometric point of view, but you have to deal with them. So you have to go multimodal with poor or not accurate biometric systems. So these are the challenges. So, but how can we improve uh, the capability and to get those goals using artificial intelligence? Because that is the key. One of the most important uh, breakthrough in the last years are coming from the artificial intelligence, so machine learning and deep learning. So if I'm asking you, what are the models that we just review uh, in um, the book? database so it is very interesting so let's have an example uh, you want to look uh, for the people that are uh, just passing through this mobile stair okay in a mall for example <laughs> excuse me um, so in this case the first thing you have to do is not to work on the wall image because it's too, a problem too complex to do all the features like the recognition and the, uh, the localization of the face of the, the person the face and uh, doing the biometric recognition we need to split to divide the problem so in this case you can use um, a method to detect the, the shape of the person or just the face then you can uh, do this, this kind of block processing, detecting if in a block of the image is present an image. In this case, you can go to a multi-classification system, which is the biometric system capable to recognize if this person is enrolled. Checking if the people passing in through, through this gate uh, is enrolled in the department, uh, for example. So face detection and identification are most of the time separated and created by artificial intelligence networks today. Also quality assessment, which is very hard for us to understand if uh, a fingerprint is good or not, because it's important to uh, avoid, to store, to enroll a fingerprint, a face, a biometric tech, which is no good. So the, um, it is not easy to automatic to um, code the features and the quality level but it's more easy to achieve this goal using artificial intelligence uh, technique uh, for example neural network uh, for example it's very hard to understand if a face is a good face for a document like uh, the ICAO rules the international civil aviation organizations uh, which is uh, requesting the face to be with a neutral expressions with no glares on the, the glasses, with a uniform background, and uh, not uh, so much occlusions. So there's a complex set of uh, control that can be not so easy coded. Most of the time are, are done by a human inspector, but uh, now there are enough uh, power and capability in deep learning model to do this activity now in a fully automated manner. Also anti-spoofing, since you can attack a system, it, uh, it is a myth, it is misconception that uh, a biometric system is perfect, uh, very, very safe. Even for biometric system, you can attack them. So you need an anti-spoofing technology to detect if something in the sensor or in front of the camera is not the real face or finger, but something else. So again, it's hard to code uh, all the features to understand if it is a fake or a real biometric trait. But or even in this case, uh, neural network and deep learning. Using machine learning, you have to think to multi-class classification and binary classification. For example, if you have a block, 
processing this image and you can uh, say that is a tree answering with this classific multi -classif multi class classification system so the class is a tree or you can have a binary classification so is this a tree yes or no or you have comparing two images are them the same class yes or no this is quite straightforward the definition of biometrics since if you are producing one single image and no identity information you have to understand if this image is enrolled or not and that is a multi-class identification so you are saying that is a for example donald trump or uh, something that is not present in the system okay if you are using um, if you are using the binary authentication, in this sense, you are comparing two different, uh, two different um, images. And you have to ask, are the same person, yes or no? And that is authentication. So as you can see, you can go from classical multi-class classification or binary classification to identification for biometrics and out identification for biometrics and authentication for biometrics so in the past this task uh, has been done uh, by feature extraction so you are coding the feature extraction so you are dealing from uh, the images so high input uh, density uh, information and uh, it's an input space with a huge dimensional and you are reducing the number of dimensions, extracting salient and irrelevant features by your hard work, okay? And then you can go into the classification, uh, this large system, uh, which is a neural network, a classical feedforward neural network to create the classification because the rules are so complex, so you are making the, the network to work to create a classifier. But if you are using deep learning methods, the network are so complex in the number of the layers and the number of the neurons that you can do that using directly the input image. So you can detect in this case is not a car or a car uh, using a deep learning without you can skip the very tedious and complex tasks to create a feature extraction. So what is the classical model that you're using for those kind of activity? It is the convolutional neural network. So uh, the structure, it is well known, so I will just briefly review it. So starting from the three channels, the red, green, blue channels, you are using uh, the first convolutional layer. So there are kernels creating a filtered uh, image uh, in output for the three channels. You are creating many different channels as a filtering activity of the convolutional layers so now you have a lot of uh, um, now you have a lot of, of data and you have to reduce this uh, uh, huge dimension space okay feature space so you are doing some kind of pooling so you are extracting information and then you go to the other layers making other convolution with other filters moving in a top-down manner into an organization so making those kind of images uh, more uh, ready to be classified as a car a face and so on so you can repeat many times those kind of layers and at the end of the last selection used uh, created by the max pooling uh, layer you will get a lot of features maybe i don't know 2000 features 16000 features expressing all the features extracted by the previous layer and then you can use a classical fully connected fit forward network which is classifying uh, the object with respect to this very reduced and interesting vector of features so at the end you can train those fully connected fit forward network to do the face, body, dog, horse, so the, for example, object recognition, object identification and classification. So how can we use those big and relevant convolutional neural network to, to do authentication? Uh, let's, you can take, for example, the AlexNet, which is a network 
decompose, as you can see, with a final 4K long uh, vector of features and doing that using 62 million parameters. Someone else trained this network or the VGG16 network, which is doing almost the same, again, coming to uh, starting from 224 by 224 three channel image and through the convolutional layers, the max pooling and so on, using more than 138 uh, uh, million parameters, you can get a very important and selected uh, vector feature of 4K uh, features to be using the last layer to do the classification. So you want to use this kind of knowledge embedded in the network using biometrics now. So you are not doing again all the training you are doing most of the time fine tuning so you can take the structure of the cnn you can cut the structure and you can just retrain to the new task which is not object detection but is phase detection now it is present the face in the image or not so you can do that um, you can do that and you can get in output the new classification a biometric measurement in this case if there is a phase is present or not so this is fine tuning how can you improve the capability in biometric system to do uh, recognition and so on in this case uh, you have to do some kind of data augmentation so to make the system more robust to the changes you have to include them in the training so perturbation like uh, phrase alignment uh, you can simulate uh, um, this kind of uh, effect with some kind of uh, software which is uh, creating different poses, different noise levels, and uh, color level, simulating different scenes and with different lines and environments. So that will create a classifier more robust for you. But please do not think that you are pushing two uh, images of faces and the deep network will recognize the faces or just tell you if the, the, the people is the same, if the person is the same. You need to use differently the CNN in biometrics. So you are doing two steps. In the training, you are all, almost the time taking the um, pre-trained neural network, like a pre-trained CNN. Then you are forcing the network to recognize uh, the making this identification system. So you are training the network to, um, you are training the network to um, recognize uh, the ID corresponding to these users, which is a complex task. But doing this training with so a complex task, you are creating a good feature vector. So features, the biometric feature you want to, these are the place where you can find those kind of features, okay? So you are doing this training and you are not interested to the accuracy. You are doing that just to create a powerful extractor of features. Then you can, in verification, take the first image and extract the features. And the matching will do a simple comparison. Most of the time in the Euclidean norm, so the Pythagoras distance will be used as a matching. So most of the time in biometric, in classical biometric system, the matter is quite complex. You are moving the complexity now in the convolutional part, and you are doing a simple matcher using the feature that you extracted in the training with this kind and special way to train the network. Okay, so you can go from Emotion recognition, which is quite good for ambient intelligence. So you have a, a whole picture of a user. You have to do the face identification. You do a little bit of processing to normalize the image and to normalize the pose. And then you go for classification. Again, we're using deep neural network after a pre-training. Okay. So you can do a, a, a age estimator. Maybe you can make more robust using that augmentation as we discussed it so it's very easy it's like uh, playing with the blocks okay to create a new activity and new research if you look to this okay. distribution sir, and to we the... can... sir we have to uh, conclude here okay no problem so just so, to... sir, because because closing ceremony is there please be online uh, for closing ceremony sir okay okay absolutely
Ah, so, okay, I proceed for one minute to conclude uh, the topic. Okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. So you have uh, biometrics, and you can find here the names of the convolutional neural network that you adopt in uh, in the most uh, general uh, applications. Okay. So biometrics is uh, anything but safe as everything in the security applications so you can also attack a biometric system by so many ways uh, now i'm skipping this part about the attacks but just to mention that you can uh, create a fake finger you can create mask uh, and you can attack the system knowing that you are using a convolutional neural network in this case uh, you are making a problem about one of the first layers which is recognizing the person and so on so i will uh, conclude my um, uh, presentation just seeing future trend so in the ambient intelligence you will find biometric sensor in a miniaturized and low-cost hardware so you are touching stuff and inside there are uh, detectors biometric detectors identifying you like in the one that you will have in the next future and today after the screen of your cell phone or inside your watch and so on so you can go for uh, biometric authentication also in this sense so please keep in mind one final thought okay so we are discovering the property of deep neural network through the capability to extract data using better models and to use the accelerator but please keep in mind that there's a fourth driver in application which is your brain the designer brain so the designer brain is improving the accuracy, the data selection, the model selection, the experiment design, avoiding a brute force and dividing the problem in small problem to be solved. So that's the real driver in your application. So I thank you very much for attention. Any question, I'll be glad to answer you. Okay, good. I'm happy about that. Okay. So, any any other question? Bing, perfect. So, thank you very much. And I, in case you want to get in touch with me. No problem. If any question, kindly write directly to chat box to sir. Sorry, can you repeat? Participants, if any for any question, kindly write in chat box directly to sir. Chat okay. box. I need to okay. see where is the chat box now. I'm doing stop sharing. Okay. Good. Uh, what are the challenges you encountered? Can, can I answer? There is enough time to answer the question, please. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. you can answer. Okay. Uh, what are the challenges you encountered on forensic um, implementation and defense of military exhibition from your point of view? And did they solve the challenge? Uh, um, uh, uh, we are dealing with the forensic with a project about um, identifying people uh, um, after that, okay, to compare to the social network to the after that. In this case, the problem was that the biometric take is uh, different due to the effect of the, the, the time after the death. So uh, in this specific, um, you have to adapt the models because uh, you will find the different features. I'm not describing, but uh, it, since it is a bit hard, but um, even if you are working with biometrics using different races, uh, this is another interesting point. You have to tune the, 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 the methods and the, the convolutional neural network to, um, to adapt better because uh, most of the time uh, there is biases, strong interesting biases with respect to the races of the faces on the, the skins used to train the networks. And again, this is another interesting point to be faced.
Okay. What, what in India, biometric fingerprints are added together. Uh, I know, I know. This is the foundation program in India, isn't it? The, the name is uh, in, the, in, in your language, but is uh, the, uh, the meaning is a foundation program, things like that. So, um, yes, uh, this is important because uh, since you are enrolled from uh, the creation of the document using uh, iris and print, and since they are one of the most accurate uh, biometric, and you can fuse them to create a one much more accurate biometric system through multimodal systems. This is important uh, for forensic, for police investigation, but also will create in the future probably privacy issues too. Absolutely. Uh, my email, you can find it. Since Fabio Scotti from my department, you will find uh, me very, very soon. And this is... Um, is it present in uh, the, the, the previous slides in case? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I don't know it's if I'm seeing all the questions. Uh, which are the direction IT biometrics are keeping the view resources on the devices? Um, in case you can contact me by fabio.scotti um, at uh, University of Milan. So it is U-N-I-M-I uh, dot I-T. So, but you can find me on Google very easily. Absolutely. Thank you very much for, for your comments. Any other question? Because I have a lot of uh, questions maybe in the through the through the lines uh, in, the, in case i'm not able to answer you you can write me in email okay good i think that we was sharp in time so perfectly thank you so I, much sir. absolutely uh, I, I thank you for invitation to attend my presentation absolutely thank you very much sir can can you join our closing ceremony so that you can yes. hand over the best of best paper award Okay, can you just re-give re me, give me again the, this is a closing session, okay, I have the link, okay, perfect, I will do. So, the uh, link is given in the chat box. Okay, now I have now, thank you very much. Thank you. One, two, one, two, three, four, okay, perfect. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir, thank you so much, sir.